that only men dominate the gang world? Think again. The most chilling mob bosses wear lipstick. Picture a kind little old lady, then give her a machine gun instead of a knitting needle. Think baking cookies, but swap the flour for firearms. That's the startling flip side of the 10 most ruthless female mobsters in the world. These aren't your typical villains in sharp suits. They're the women society least suspects as we dive into their dark realms where fortunes are built on fear and the rule of law is just another hurdle to jump. You'll be forced to rethink everything you thought you knew about the underworld. These women have not only entered the boys club, they've rewritten the rules, amassing fortunes and leaving a trail of chaos in their wake. Number 10, Sandra Avila Beltran. Sandra Avila Beltran, born October 11, 1960, was called the Queen of the Pacific because she ran a big drug group in Mexico. Her life story sounds like something out of a movie. She married twice and both her husbands, who used to be cops, but turned into drug traffickers were killed. Things took a turn for the worst for Sandra in 2002 when her son was kidnapped and she had to pay $5 million to get him back. This incident put her on the police radar. By 2007, she faced charges for being part of organized crime and drug trafficking. Despite dropping some charges, she couldn't escape from being found guilty of having illegal weapons and laundering money. She told the police she was just a housewife selling clothes, but they didn't believe her. Now, she's still in jail. Who would have thought that selling clothes could be so complicated, right? Number 9. Claudia Ochoa Felix Claudia Ochoa Felix was known as the Kim Kardashian of organized crime because of her flashy lifestyle shown on Instagram. In 2014, reports surfaced that she was leading a Mexican gang called Los Antrax, known for many violent acts. After her boyfriend, the previous leader, was caught, Claudia stepped up. Despite her trying to look like a caring mom on social media, it's hard to square that with having unlimited money and a custom AK-47. How can someone manage being a mom and leading a crime gang. Number 8. Judy Moran Judy Moran's story is deeply tied to Melbourne, Australia's criminal scene. She was linked to the Moran family, big names in drug trafficking. After several family members, including her first husband, son, and brother-in-law were killed, Judy found herself in hot water. In 2009, she was arrested for her involvement in her brother-in-law's murder, thanks to police surveillance. She ended up with a 26-year prison sentence. Being a brother-in-law has never been more dangerous. Number 7. Thelma Wright Thelma Wright took over the Philadelphia drug scene after her husband was killed in 1986. She was making up to $400,000 a month, but decided to leave that life behind after a close call at a nightclub shootout in 1991. She turned her life around and became an inspirational speaker, warning others about the dangers of crime. Her message is clear. Two options, death or jail. That's it. Would I do it again? No. No, absolutely not. A clear testimony that we should all keep in mind because jail and death are not options I would enjoy, personally. Number 6. Maria Leon Maria Leon managed a big criminal empire while raising 13 children. Her gang, supported by the Mexican Mafia, was involved in drug smuggling, murders, and human trafficking. After her son was killed in a police shootout in 2008, she tried to sneak back into the U.S. for his funeral, but got caught. Her arrest led to an eight-year prison sentence, a telling example of how crime affects families and communities. So those were five of the most ruthless female mobsters in the world, but these next five will truly scare you. Number 5. Maria Licciardi Maria Licciardi, born March 24, 1951, climbed to the top of the Licciardi clan in Second De Liano, North Naples becoming the godmother. After her husband and brothers were arrested, she took over, guiding the clan through drug trafficking and extortion. But Maria did something unheard of before in her clan's history. She ventured into sex trafficking, buying young girls from the Albanian mafia for $2,000 each, promising them jobs, but instead forcing them into sex work. This horrific trade ended in murder for those deemed no longer useful. Her downfall began over a heroin dispute in 1999 leading to a police crackdown after public outrage over 11 deaths caused by a pure heroin batch sold against her advice. On the run until 2001, Maria's arrest didn't stop her influence. It's believed she still leads from behind bars. Can you imagine leading a criminal empire from a prison cell? Number 4. Rosetta Cutolo 
Rosetta Cutolo, born in 1937, sister to Rafael Cutolo of the Nuova Camorra Organizzata, found herself at the helm due to her brother's incarceration. Operating from a lavish 16th century palace, Rosetta's leadership was marked by a significant act of violence when she ordered a police station to be bombed, leading to a decade-long manhunt ending in 1993 with her surrender, citing exhaustion from life as a fugitive. Initially sentenced to nine years, her portrayal as a frail old lady in court significantly reduced her sentence. Despite being acquitted of nine murders, her time as a fugitive underscores the extremes to which she went for power. But can changing your image really change your past? Comment your thoughts below. Number 3. Queen Pin Jemmerka Thompson, known as Queen Pin, rose from poverty in Los Angeles to become a major crack cocaine trafficker with her husband, Anthony Mosley. After his murder, Thompson continued their criminal empire alone, earning hundreds of thousands monthly, until betrayal led to her arrest at her son's graduation. Her 15-year sentence marked a turning point, culminating in her memoir, Queen Pin, a memoir, a story of crime lost and eventual redemption. It's a stark reminder of how quickly fortunes can change, how many can truly say they've come back from the brink. Number 2. The Big Kitten Rafaela Del Terrio, dubbed the Big Kitten, stepped into the role of Camorra boss after her husband's murder. Her 2012 arrest, alongside 65 others, was a spectacle, with police seizing extravagant assets, including a Ferrari with a solid gold number plate. Despite surviving three gunshot wounds in a gang-related attack, Dalterio's criminal endeavors spanned from extortion to drug trafficking, contributing to the Camorra's notorious reputation. The gang's annual earnings of over $200 billion highlight the vast scale of their operations. Is there a limit to ambition in the criminal underworld? Number 1. Anna Cristina Anna Cristina, in September 2012, was caught leading a high-end sex trafficking ring busted by an undercover operation. Despite claiming to run a dating service, hidden camera footage revealed her arranging illicit encounters, resulting in a six-month imprisonment and five years probation. Her operation involving high-profile models and earning an estimated $10 million underscores the dark side of glamour. Manhattan DA Aaron Dugan's comment, there is nothing glamorous about prostitution, paints a clear picture of the reality behind Christina's facade. Does the pursuit of wealth justify the means? Comment below. Bonus, Griselda Blanco. For staying until now, you have unlocked a bonus mobster, and that is none other than the infamous Griselda Blanco. Griselda Blanco Restrepo, born February 15, 1943, was a notorious Colombian drug lord involved in the cocaine trade in Miami, New York, California, and Colombia from the 1970s to the early 2000s. Linked by some to the Medellin cartel, Blanco's operations reportedly made $80 million monthly. Starting with marijuana with her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, she later moved to cocaine trafficking with her second husband, Alberto Bravo, in Queens, New York. After being indicted in 1975, Blanco fled to Colombia but returned to the U.S. to start a new empire in Miami. Her Miami era marked the violent Miami drug war era in the 1980s, with cocaine replacing cannabis as the major traffic drug. Blanco's activities contributed to the hundreds of homicides during this period. On September 3, 2012, her life ended in an ironic manner resembling the violence she partook in. She was drive-by assassinated by a motorcycle gunman in Medellin outside a butcher shop. Not a great way to go if you ask me. And if you're interested, we have an entire video that goes more in depth on Griselda Blanco's hidden life. Check the description below to access the video link. What are some lessons we can learn from these true stories? Number one, trust your gut when something feels off. If someone in your life starts displaying sudden wealth, aggression, or secretive behaviors, it could be a red flag. Trust your instincts and maintain a safe distance. It's better to err on the side of caution than ignore signs that someone might be involved in dangerous activities. Number two, firm boundaries can keep you alive. Know where to draw the line. If you're uncomfortable with how someone acts, especially if they show traits of manipulation or aggression, it's crucial to assert your boundaries. This isn't just about saying no, it's about protecting your peace and security. And don't forget that sometimes just knowing the wrong person, even if you haven't done anything wrong, can get you killed. Number three, understand the high stakes, jail or death. Entering a life of crime isn't just risky, it often ends in only two ways, jail or death. Witnessing or knowing someone who spirals into crime activities reminds us 
but the allure of quick wealth or power comes with devastating consequences. Knowing this reality can deter you from considering such a path as a good option. Got your heart racing, didn't we? Hit that subscribe button and join us on this thrilling journey. And hey, drop a comment below if there's a topic that's been keeping you up at night. We might just turn the spotlight on it next.